In 2015, one of the biggest corruption scandals in the history of world football occurred. According to allegations, FIFA officials accepted millions of dollars in bribes to secure the hosting rights for the FIFA events in South Africa and Brazil in 2010 and 2011, respectively. Following the allegations, Swiss authorities uncovered the corruption claims they had long suspected by raiding FIFA's headquarters in Zurich. What was the main cause of the FIFA corruption scandal? Why were FIFA's top executives accused of corruption, and what were the penalties imposed on them? How did this scandal affect the world of football? How was FIFA's reputation affected, and what was done to regain its reputation? For all this and more, before starting the video, if you're interested in universal economic history, you can subscribe to my channel and turn on notifications to be informed about new videos I upload every day. Enjoy the watch! Universal Economic History The raid was the result of an FBI investigation that included allegations of corruption during the bidding process for the host countries of the 2010 and 2014 World Cups. The raid yielded numerous documents implicating corruption and bribery within FIFA. These documents included records related to the voting processes for determining the hosts of the 2010 and 2014 World Cups, financial records and bank accounts of FIFA officials, sponsorship agreements, television rights, and other sources of revenue. The documents provided substantial evidence confirming the allegations of corruption and bribery within FIFA. Following the seizure of the documents, legal proceedings were initiated against FIFA officials and businessmen involved in corruption and bribery. Swiss authorities appointed a special prosecutor who conducted a detailed investigation that led to the indictment of numerous individuals from FIFA and several countries. The prosecutor found evidence of corruption in FIFA's World Cup bids in Brazil, the sale of TV rights, and sponsorship agreements. The FIFA corruption scandal created a significant outcry in the international public opinion. It was seen as a major scandal exposing the involvement of the highest-level football administrators in corruption. The incident was widely reported by the media, and its repercussions echoed worldwide through the media. After the facts came to light, numerous newspapers, magazines, television channels, and other media outlets brought FIFA's corruption scandal to the forefront of their coverage. The aftermath of the scandal was closely followed by many football fans, supporters, and sports officials. The media also emphasized that the scandal revealed that corruption is a widespread problem in the sports world. While some sports officials argued that corruption is inherent in sports or that it is not limited to FIFA alone, others advocated for greater transparency and accountability in sports management. The scandal became a significant event that reverberated through the world of football and had a profound impact. Its repercussions triggered important discussions on sports management, the future of football, and the fight against corruption. Some football fans, considering the scandal contrary to the nature of football, advocated for FIFA to take stricter measures against corruption. Following the revelation of the scandal, Many supporters worldwide took to the streets to protest against FIFA and called for greater transparency and accountability in combating corruption. Other football fans claimed that the scandal was not limited to FIFA alone and that corruption is widespread in sports. This group argued that FIFA should make more efforts to combat corruption. After the scandal, significant debates took place among FIFA fans regarding the future of the sport and the governance of football. Many football enthusiasts argued that the sport should be managed in accordance with its nature and that there should be greater transparency and accountability in sports administration. As a result, the scandal triggered a strong reaction among football fans and increased the demands for more transparency and accountability in sports management. It also opened discussions about the necessary measures to create a fair and transparent structure in football administration. Following the investigations, the first trial took place in Zurich, where FIFA is headquartered. FIFA officials faced charges of fraud and money laundering. It was alleged that the officials received more than $200 million in bribes. The officials were found to have used various methods, such as sponsorship agreements, television rights, and opportunities to work in FIFA events, to receive these bribes. 
Swiss authorities investigated the corruption allegations surrounding the voting processes for the 2006 and 2011 World Cups as well. Many FIFA officials were arrested and found guilty in Switzerland. Some were imprisoned, while others were sentenced to pay fines. Additionally, another separate case was opened by a federal court in New York, United States. In this case, 42 FIFA officials were faced with charges including bribery, fraud, and money laundering. The accused officials included figures such as Jeffrey Webb, the former vice president of FIFA, Jérôme Valka, known as Sepp Blatter's right-hand man and former FIFA secretary general, and Nicolas Leos, the former president of the South American Football Confederation. Furthermore, it was alleged that some senior executives of sponsor companies were involved in the scandal. For example, Carlos Villanueva, the marketing director of Nike in South America, was accused of giving bribes for a FIFA event in Brazil. Among the charges leveled against FIFA officials were accepting bribes for the trading of FIFA events in South Africa and Brazil in 2010 and 2011, gaining illegal advantages in television rights, and engaging in corruption in sponsorship agreements. The trial resulted in the arrest of numerous FIFA officials and businessmen. Many FIFA officials were found guilty and received prison sentences. Prominent figures like Michel Platini, the president of UEFA, and Jerome Valka, FIFA's secretary general, were removed from their positions. The scandal also led to a decrease in FIFA's revenue sources, such as sponsorship agreements and television rights. This financial strain caused FIFA to go through difficult times and further damaged its reputation. The FIFA corruption scandal also shook the sponsors supporting FIFA. The revelation of the scandal prompted many sponsors to re-evaluate their relationships with FIFA and, in some cases, terminate their sponsorship agreements. Major companies like Coca-Cola, Adidas, Visa, and McDonald's demanded that FIFA investigate and take preventive measures against corruption. Adidas terminated its sponsorship agreement with FIFA in 2015 due to FIFA's failure to take sufficient steps to combat corruption. Other sponsors chose not to renew their sponsorship agreements, leading to a significant decrease in FIFA's revenues. For instance, Emirates Airlines did not renew its sponsorship agreement with FIFA in 2015. Additionally, companies like Sony and Castrol terminated their sponsorship agreements with FIFA. Following the scandal, FIFA took several measures to alleviate sponsors' concerns. For example, sponsors were not allowed to become members of FIFA's executive committee, and they had the right to terminate agreements in case of ethical breaches. After the FIFA corruption scandal came to light, it marked a significant turning point for world football. Sepp Blatter, the FIFA president, resigned from his position in June 2015 during the General Assembly. Blatter's resignation was seen as an important step towards restoring FIFA's reputation and implementing corporate governance reforms. Blatter had been the FIFA president for 17 years and was considered one of the most influential figures in world football. His resignation led to significant changes in FIFA's governance. Regarding the governance structure, a selection committee was established to elect FIFA's new president, and candidates underwent stricter scrutiny. Moreover, the number of members in FIFA's executive committee was reduced, and specific criteria were established for their nomination. In the elections held during the General Assembly, Italian football administrator Gianni Infantino was elected as the FIFA president, succeeding Blatter. Infantino stated that FIFA would embrace transparency, honesty, and justice and work for the future of football. After the FIFA corruption scandal, FIFA launched the FIFA Reform Program to combat corruption. This program aimed to make FIFA more transparent, accountable, and democratic in its governance. As part of the program, changes were made to FIFA's governance structure, financial transactions, and ethical rules. Regarding financial transactions, FIFA's income and expenses were made more transparent, and financial reports underwent stricter audits. Additionally, an independent body called the FIFA Financial Audit and Compliance Committee was established to provide stricter oversight of FIFA's financial transactions. FIFA's ethical rules were tightened, and an independent committee was formed to oversee FIFA's ethical standards. Moreover, stricter measures were implemented to ensure that members of FIFA's executive committee adhered to the ethical rules. 
While these steps were significant measures taken by FIFA to combat corruption, some criticisms were raised. Some critics argued that the FIFA reform program was insufficient and called for more radical changes in FIFA's structure and governance. In summary, FIFA took important steps to combat corruption and the FIFA reform program was a positive move towards ensuring transparency and accountability in football management. However, some critics argue that more radical changes are needed in FIFA's structure and governance, calling for further efforts in this regard. Thank you for watching my video. If you liked it, please hit the like button. If there's a specific video you'd like me to make on economic history, don't forget to mention it in the comments section. I wish everyone a pleasant day. Universal Economic History